But let's talk about ocean litter and microplastics. I'm going through this quickly, but there's a lot more detail in the book. So I'm just giving you a little bit of information on all the different topics. So people talk about these floating islands of plastic. And the first thing you, for you to know is that's a lie. There is no floating island of plastic. You can't find it on a satellite. You can't find it with a ship. Nobody has ever seen it. It's a lie. It was made up, the first reports of this plastic came from a guy called Captain Cook. And then it was reported in a German newspaper. They talked about a carpet of plastic. That's also a lie. And then a Russian newspaper took the article and they made it into a mountain. Suddenly in the Russian article, they said, there's a mountain of plastic and it generates this amazing image, which is stuck in everybody's head, but it's completely false. Here is the actual amount of plastic, which has been, this has been studied for decades, right? So this is not something new. They've been going back and forth with nets, measuring, and collecting the plastic for many decades. So these are very solid numbers. So the amount of plastic outside of the ocean is very small. You can see these numbers here. So this is like 10 grams per square kilometer. If you look in the middle of these gyres, that's these areas where there's more plastic, the average amount of plastic is maybe 300 grams per square kilometer. Of course, it's not very easy to imagine that. So if you convert that to something you can picture, if you took an Olympic sized swimming pool of, uh, of water, and if you had a game die, you know, a little red die, I don't know if I have one here, but you know, when you play Monopoly, you have a little red die. That much plastic in an Olympic sized swimming pool is more than you find in the worst areas here. So if you swim through this area, you don't detect it. You don't know that you're in a gyre. If you go through it on a sailing boat, you don't know that you're in it either. So calling this a mountain of plastic is a lie. And even calling it a soup is a lie. Because if you were to order this soup in a restaurant, you would order 100 and this soup here on the left, the average amount of plastic in the ocean. You would have to order 130 bathtubs of soup to get one tiny piece of plastic, right? That, if you ordered that soup in the restaurant, you would send it back and say, I didn't order water, I ordered soup, right? So these are fictional things. They're very strong images created by professional marketing people to make you angry and to get your money out of your pocket, but they're untrue. And this is not one study. This is many studies showing the real numbers. So you've been lied to. Okay, so we've been told about this for decades. We're claimed to be huge floating islands but the actual amount is around 500 grams per square kilometer. And look, I'm not saying we should have stuff in the ocean. That's not the point. The point is that we shouldn't lie to people to get their money. We should tell people the truth to see the real problems, the real problem in perspective and spend our money and our time to clean up the mess in the best way. That's the point of starting with the truth. You can't solve a problem if you start with a bunch of lies. Okay, so that's less than one game die per Olympic size swimming pool. You can't tell if you're swimming through it and the average is one piece per 130 bathtubs of water. So it's a, it is a problem, but it's severely exaggerated. And it's not a patch or a soup. Okay, so let's move on to microplastics because you know you find microplastics in the ocean. You, you hear a lot of scary stories about microplastics. And again, this has been studied for uh, decades. And there's a, this is the only area really where I found the science was junk. And that's a strong thing to say, I'm a scientist, right? So I don't accuse other scientists of being unprofessional very often, unless I have very strong evidence. But this is uh, what's going on in the microplastic area. These people who are doing the studies are not plastics experts. They don't know what they're doing. So the first mistake they make is they go and buy the wrong kind of plastic. They buy microplastics made of a special type of polystyrene, which doesn't exist anywhere in the, in the environment. Doesn't exist. So that would be like me saying, I want to study dogs I'm gonna go and do the study on cats, right? If you wanna study dogs, you buy a dog, right? And study the dog, you don't study cats. And this is what these people are doing. They are studying the wrong kind of plastic and they're using up to 10 million times too much of it, right? So compared to what's actually in the environment, they on purpose use a million times or 10 million times too much on purpose to get a bad result, to make the plastic results look scary. And some of the studies even take the plastic and they show it's safe, and then they're not happy with that. So what do they do? They take the microplastic and they soak it in poison. They soak it in poison. So the poison goes in the plastic and then they put that with the fish and say, look, the fish are poisoned. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the plastic, right? It's because they soaked the plastic in poison, which is ridiculous. So these people are on purpose either 
faking you, trying to get your money, trying to make their research look more exciting, or uh, or basically trying to get donations because they're uh, you know some sort of group that wants your money. So most of the microplastic work is total junk. And I explain why on my website, I go through every paper and explain why it's not valid. They use the wrong plastic, the wrong kind. Um, but the, the studies which are professional show that microplastics you find are mainly polyethylene and polypropylene. They're safe plastics that we eat our food out of and there's no problem. That's what the professional studies show.